This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 635. Tuesdays, we've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh, PA. Lucha Central this past weekend at Sorgatron Media Studios. We have a crew. First of us, first of all, joining us is the only one on the Mayhem roster with a featured Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike in Poughkeepsie, New York. And Poughkeepsie, New York, soon to be the landing spot of one Kenny Omega. That's right. Come to NEW up there in November. Very excited. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I don't care if I have to take off from work. I, I'm always happy when you're excited about wrestling in this vein of something like this or Lucha Underground, considering how our, our raw wrap ups usually go lately. Hey, to be fair, that's not my fault. That's Raw's fault. That is true. That is true. And you're. Yeah, we won't get to that part. Also with <laughs> us, we have returns on the show. And mm-hmm. I realize, oh, I do I do have a, a marker for him. Because I realized I didn't do the titles before the show. Oh, one. well. But Larry is back. Hi. Hey, he is back I'm from alive. his exile from the exile. Mayhem show. I took a sabbatical. You did. From from from, from the show and wrestling, and apparently. wrestling in general. It wow. Was, it, it was quite healthy. No. Um, I haven't tried watching Raw again to see if it actually worked. Mm. Oh, don't. Mm, I'm don't feeling do that. good about it. No. All right, we'll get into that. We'll, we'll get. We'll do a little refresher course for you. And also from the Thrifty Podcast, he is back. I'm back. It's he been a while. Back. I've been a while. He has some stuff. We'll we'll, we'll talk about those after the Patreons. Yeah. Uh, but the Thrifty Podcast just recorded in here. Yeah, it sure did. It sure wrapped up. Yes. Sure wrapped up in here. It was a. It was a. It was a good show. We did some uh, spooky stuff. We found some. Uh, thrift items that were secondhand and some of them haunted and we did a whole thrifty podcast episode i'm happy to be back with the 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 wrestling mayhem maniacs huh (laughs) i like that the maniacs i really like that yeah i'm I'm completely calm Mm -hmm. yes exactly uh but no uh no thank you for being on of course a part of the sorgatron media podcast network and we're doing some cool stuff here and it's good to see you guys back here and in action. But guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're here live, of course, on Facebook Live. Want to say hello to our friends out there, Dave, Alex Miller, uh, Matt, uh, other Dave, Bobby, FJ Town, Mark, a whole bunch of people hanging out there tonight uh, with us on the stream. Thank you so much, everybody. And we are a little late for you guys, but usually that's we're here. That's my fault. That's, that's my all right. Fault. No, that's all right. That's my we're, fault. We're, we're stacking the <laughs> podcast tonight. Again, everybody in studio. But you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We do this as well as some show recaps for Lucha Underground and WWE Raw, as well as some great interviews. We just had Sam Adonis, uh, the uh, the world's hottest heel from CMLL on this past week on the Indie Mayhem Show, as well as the entirety of Team Storm that have been ripping it up in the Pittsburgh area and Ohio. Just had a good weekend at, at Remix Pro, from what I understand. And also, in uh, so many other shows there and at, over at IndieWrestling.us, you can drop us a line to that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. So, uh, find the links to uh, subscribe to us on podcast and video form on the website or look us up on your favorite platform. And of course, please uh, like us on the Facebook page so you know when we do go live for this and other shows as well as the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group where we have a lot of great conversations throughout the week. And typically we're here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Eastern time on Facebook Hell Live. Yeah. Yes. And uh and then also thank you to our streaming partners, the 405media.com for carrying us out there on the West Coast and to the worldwide internet listening audience every night at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight eastern time so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem and thank you to our patreon supporters patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and our fan of the show one dollar level Woo! 
Ooh, Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlos Foundation for Qu- Podcast Betterment. At the Pocky Club $5 level, we've been getting you guys a lot of uh, extra content here lately. Uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, and Heel Bradley, and... I said it too early. Doc Remedy and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And at the Pizza Club $10 level, our friend Billy Johnson. Uh, Again, you guys are helping us keep the lights on here in the studio. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. So, uh, first of all, before we uh, brush up, Larry, on uh, what's going on in the world of professional wrestling, um, particularly the WWE, um, Toddy, you... You like to bring gifts. I, I do <laughs> like to bring gifts, Sorg, because I know that uh, you know it's a, a studio that you, you've been running here and you care about a lot. We are also big wrestling fans. Absolutely. So with Thrifty Podcast, what I do every week is I go around and collect uh, secondhand items, and I drag the haul back to the studio and record an episode about it for those who don't know me. And I actually have three gifts for you that I've had for a, a, a little bit, to be honest with you, and just hadn't had the chance to, to, to bring them on over to you. And since with Thrifty, the episode that we recorded here um, was Halloween-based, I busted out the Halloween masks mm-hmm. that um, we have uh, maybe the, the best luchador of all time, Rey Mysterio Jr. mask. Yes. And then we have a Kane mask. These are both from 2012 um, they were originally uh, sold in Targets, but I got these at a Goodwill. But um, they're just the, the top half of the masks, so they were bought secondhand. I actually wore um, the Kane mask. I was Kane for Halloween last year because that's when my hair was long before I like freaked out and like shaved it. <laughs> um, but I was I actually used this Kane mask as a, um, a, a as my Kane mask for Halloween. And I did the whole, and it was like the new school cane with like the the red straps and stuff like that on the on the on the front of the uh, like the black tank top. If you search me somewhere on Facebook, you, you'll come across me wearing it. But I um, was fiddling around with it, and when I wore this for Halloween, I had my glasses under the cane mask, and I have found that when I put the mask on and then the glasses over it, it helped out a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So I have these. Um, this right here is actually a pretty unique piece. Um, this is I, I've had for a while, and as this you, is impressive. And as you know, I I I'm a wrestling fan, and I'm also a uh, I collect uh, vintage VHS, uh, mostly horror, but you know whatever weirds out there, I'll grab. And this is two in one, so this is actually a, a, a prize piece that I'm donating to you. But this oh. is the VCR WrestleMania game. Oh, we're gonna have to Twitch play this one. And this is not easy to find. No, um, no. I knew you'd appreciate it as much as me, wow. and I like to help out as much as possible because you lent it, you lent me a, a computer for like half a year. I swear to God. <laughs> so I felt bad that I had that computer for so long. So I'm going to give you my copy of the VCR WrestleMania game. And yes, wow, it works. And yes, I've you. played it. And um, yes, the manuals in here as well. Wow. And it even Look has that. it even has the original. Um, content that came with the game. That so is an acclaimed video game ad for like Nintendo games, it looks like. This is a Nintendo video game ad. Yeah. And then also um, the board game ad in the same. Oh, wow. So so this is by, you know, just a little descriptive for you guys on the yeah. on the audio. So the front is like the classic, um, you know, Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan, mm-hmm. you know, stuff. And, uh, it, you know, probably around the same the time of that WrestleMania, like, first Nintendo game, right? Yeah, right. Uh, so that's what a lot of the, the stuff on the front looks like. It's actually by Acclaim. So Acclaim was doing board games. Yeah, way like back from, when. And from that ad, it looks like they were doing board games of several of their video game that's, properties. Yes. And so this uh, piece of uh, info here, this is, like, the Acclaim that came with it. So they did wow. VCR quarterback. They did VCR hockey. Of course, the wrestling game that I have yeah, in my hand, yeah. and they did VCR golf and VCR basketball. Wow. So this is a piece of a much larger collection, but obviously I I, um, I, I just have this one. In my thrifting, uh, out there in the thrifting minds, I've come across the football one twice, yeah. but it wasn't all there, so I didn't buy it either time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is a board game that you could uh, hook up the uh, VHS player, the VCR. And I have some. And you and um, this is the actual tape here. So this is the VHS tape, as you could hear for those on audio only. Um, <laughs> but this is and it's the original sticker on the tape as well. 
Wow. And so you play this along here. Um, it's a lot of fun for friends and family. Um, I, I recommend it even for non wrestling fans because it's just like something to kind of kick the can on. So it's yeah, good for like a board yeah. game night. So or... how, how is the play on it? Like what it was, it was a, you know, is it, is it clips from WrestleMania like three or one or something um, or what it is like what, what, and I'll explain it as I'm on, uh, like unwrapping the board here. I have all the, everything, everything you need with it. Wow. Um, the board here, I'll open it up and if the live stream viewers could kind of see it right now for those at home, <laughs> who are not live streaming. But it is basically a a board here that you you use die to, to go around this this map here. And depending on what space you land, that's the action you perform. Mm-hmm. So what happens if you land on a VCR spot, you play put, hit play on the VCR. So you'll see what you have to do. Like it, it for example, it'll be like you, you'll see maybe a face, body slam, a heel, and it'll be like you got body slammed to go back you know, three spaces or whatever. So you'll just see clips at a time. You don't have to watch entire segments. But yeah, this is the VCR uh, WrestleMania game. Um, And you have all the cue cards in here as well, too. And I've I've had this for a while, and uh, you. I, I did find there is a YouTube of the intro to the VCR game. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you've you've helped me so much out in the past, and I felt bad for for having your oh, computers no. long. Right. So Thank I you. have to, you know, I have to give of uh, the people who give to me, I have to give back. So we're we're absolutely going to have to play that on Twitch or something to get the VCR hooked up to to a streamer or something. Mm-hmm. Get the, a, and play that. Get the wrestle uh you know wrestling mayhem maniacs out here and we mm-hmm. could get it going, right? I also brought in kind of game related. I also brought in recently for our game nights. I, I came across my uh, WWE Legends Uno game and it comes in a tin. Mm-hmm. Uh so that's right cuz somebody was talking about Uno. I was like, well, we 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 got this hooked up. Yeah. So very excited about that. Thank you so much, Ty. Thrifty Absol- podcast. Absolutely. Check absolutely. It out. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, also, you know, from the returns, like I said, Larry has to be reacquainted with wrestling. You have to be re, you know, yes. brought back in. You know, I I know, you know, there's going to be the the repetitive nature of Raw. They're going to let you know what's going on. But uh, other than that, I mean, how long has it been? What was the last thing you remember? Um, the last thing I remember. Oh. Nothing sounds like no. Uh, the, no. the last time, the last thing I, that is actually like fresh in my brain is the Sasha Bailey counseling sessions. Oh wow! Okay, oh, wow. Okay. I don't remember All how right. long ago that was. Don't worry, the story has not progressed yet. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, Mike. Do you want to do well, two truths and a lie on this one? Oh yeah, let's. Have Are we some doing fun. this just with with? Is this over the course of the last two months? Yes. Or? yes. Yeah. This. Just, uh, I'm just. I'm okay. just pulling. And you filled random. us. You, you filled us in on what you know from from what you watched on Raw last night. Yeah. yeah. And just my Google feed for okay because yeah the news yeah, okay. reports some of that stuff. But yeah. Okay. Okay. All Let's right. Um. So Larry. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton have had a feud recently. Okay. R- um. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is involved okay. two of the three following things. Okay. You need to tell me which one it has not involved. Okay. Okay. A screwdriver. Okay. A ladder. Okay. And earlobes. What? Mm-hmm. Yes. Two Ear of lobes? those mm-hmm. are real. Mm-hmm. One of them is not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The latter makes sense. Okay. And earlobes. Okay. Uh, you got one of them right. I'm not telling you which one because this is going to make it more fun that way. Okay. I'm guessing the latter's not right. <laughs> you are correct. Yeah, you're co- on the second pass. That one seemed that. really obvious second that it would be a ladder. That. Yeah, on, on the second pass, it, it makes it, you know, a little yeah. more. Why, mm-hmm. what, what happened to his earlobes and screw? Oh. <laughs> ah, there it is. He has gauges, there it doesn't is. he? Yeah, yeah, they've been doing yeah. a lot with the gauges. He was pouring on was it there with blood? his finger. No, no, he he put the screwdriver through the earlobe and twisted it. Oh, at hell in the cell, a bunch just twisted it. Oh, yeah. twisted it like like twisted it around. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a heel now. Orton's a heel. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why so why he's point. feuding with Jeff Hardy in 2018? I have no idea. He is really upset about. But it makes about, sense that he's a heel. He is really upset about Jeff's alternative lifestyle. 
pretty much. I guess. <laughs> I think I think with Orton, what they're doing here with Orton is they're trying to put him against. Uh, I mean, I don't know, he's, but he's trying the, to help the new kids get over. Yeah, but also like I think they're gonna uh, they're gonna throw him against Styles eventually for the WWE Championship. I Likely. think it's gonna be Styles and Orton. Uh, I mean, Styles and Miz is out there too. I mean, those are two feuds that are could happen on the brink of that. Um, I'm assuming that's why they're heating Orton up. There's no really other reason I could think of. I mean, he's as over as he's ever going to be. And Mm -hmm. um, I guess throwing him against Hardy didn't hurt it because I guess if they're trying to get Orton booed, um, Jeff Hardy Hardy being over as a face, that's the only really... To to fully turn Orton, you need a hot baby face. And the casuals love Hardy, so I'm assuming they threw Orton at him because that's the only way to get Orton booed by the Mm -hmm. casuals. So Nakamura is not in... He's not feuding oh, with Hardy. Anymore. No, no. We, we basically forgot Nakamura existed. I don't think. Yeah, he really? wasn't. He wasn't on the pay per view this weekend. He's the, he, he was the not. The, he's he, the United States champ, and he's not on television. Yeah. Yeah. Oscar's not on television. Uh, she was. She was just on. She yeah, was just on a little bit. Not yeah. like a. But not like for real. It yeah. was like, oh, she was on. That was like why we're talking about it. She was on. Uh, <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, Podner saying dude. that they showed a close up of the ear holes uh, on on uh, SmackDown tonight. Oh, lovely. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Uh, Larry, Larry, do, do yes. you want another sure. set of two yeah, truths and a lie? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Two truths and a lie. Here we go. Yeah, once we get them normalized to this, we, I swear we have some news items after the first break. I mean, do we? <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, no. It'll be fine. All right. Uh, fact, all right. All right. Fact the first. Drake Maverick, the former rock star Spud, is now managing the Authors of Pain, who are now known as simply AOP. Okay. Fact the second. Elias won the Intercontinental Championship at Hell in the Cell and carries the championship in a guitar case. Okay. Fact the third. WWE 2K19 has a big head mode. Well, that does that has nothing to do with storyline. Come up with a new fact the third. Okay, all right, fine. I'll make up a new fact. Um, well, here's the thing though, you have to stick with that one even though it was kind of a botch. You have to right, stick fine. with it. You have to all shoot right, with right. it because now right. you're going to know that it's Well, no, I don't know that it's fake or not just cuz okay. I don't play video games. Okay. I'm very um, I'm very creative. All right. <laughs> What was the second one? Um, Elias carries the Intercontinental title in the guitar case. I don't believe that they'll ever give him a title ever. Okay. So I don't think that's true. <laughs> Sadly, you're correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize. So, so is Drake Maverick not on 205 anymore? He still is. He still is. Oh, no. He He's still the is. general manager on 205 and yeah. the manager of those yep. giant don't monsters. Ask, don't ask him what he does on his Monday nights. No. Yeah, what does he no? What does he do on his Monday nights? Well, that's right. his whole thing. When he's on two hundred five live, everybody's like, "Oh, you're on Mondays," and he's like, "Just don't don't ask what we do. Don't ask me what I do on Mondays." So they're honestly not the authors of Pain anymore. They're just AOP. Mm-hmm. They are just AOP. I did not know that. that yeah, I love oh, Drake yeah. Maverick. Jake Drake Maverick is. So they're I love they're Drake turning Maverick. them into the APA. Uh, yeah, only uh, with like a little white dude with them. <laughs> just like a little, <laughs> like a little scrawny white dude with them. Yeah. Uh, he's their right. Spike Dudley. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Drake fan, but oh yeah, it is. It is what I it think is. he's hilarious. I'm curious yeah. to see what they do with it. I don't get it, but no, no. I'd no. be interested to. It's watch It's almost that. like they had something with Paul Ellering and they blew it, and now they're just like, well, these boys can't get over. It's just like, yeah, because you took away the part that made him over. Yeah, yeah. So that's well, what they do. That's yeah. That's, I mean, that's modern day WWE. So they so they give him a mouth. Uh, they a gave mouthpiece. them a mouthpiece. Well, yeah. He's not the only one. Okay. Um, oh, uh, Sorg, you, Sorg, uh, Sorg. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Sorg? I, uh, wait, I got this one. Larry? Yes. Okay. okay. Do you know who Leo Rush is? I do. Okay. Uh, Leo Rush is now managing. Um, <laughs> and Is he wrestling still? Uh, he might be still wrestling. He, uh, he's still wrestling. He was on season. NXT, he's, right? Uh, yeah, he was. But he's, he's been, on 205. He's been on 205 he lately and okay. doing some really good stuff. I recommend checking it out. But um, so, so he is managing... So this is actually two lies and a truth. Ooh, I'm flipping I like it. This. I'm like flipping this. it. Okay. He is managing Titus O'Neil or Bobby Lashley or Apollo Cruz. Wait. 
Oh, this I is like all. He's okay. man- Jay- so Drake one of those Maverick. is one of true. These He's is managing true. one of those guys. What were the three? Bobby Lashley. Okay. Apollo Cruz. Okay. Titus O'Neil. God. He's really thinking, folks. And he's really good. He's really good yeah, at it. I'll tell you that. He's yeah. a good mouthpiece. Yeah, it's fantastic. Lovely a rush too. Titus doesn't need a manager. He is a manager. Okay. But does he need a manager though? Think about it. <laughs> and he was well. <laughs> Think about it. Who was the first one? Um, Apollo uh, Cruz, Bobby Lashley, Titus, Titus Bobby Lashley. Lashley or Cruz. It's Bobby Lashley. Yes, he's managing Bobby he's Lashley. Managing Bobby, Bobby Lashley. Lashley. My man. Man, that was a short-lived, short-lived run for him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> but it was it was kind so, of fun. So, what other cruiserweights are doing are doing Just double duty two. as managers? Well, on well um, Drew Gulak keeps um, showing up whenever half the locker room's beating up the Shield. Uh, Drew Gulak's hanging out too uh, on Raw. Love yeah. Drew. Love yeah. Drew too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he just uh, but he just uh, like hates the shield so bad he's hanging out on Monday nights. Um, Drew Gulak, you you folks may know this, maybe some. Wait, 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 hold on. The shield. What the shield? Sword. Oh no, no, Ambrose he... did come back. That's right. I do yeah. remember that. Yes. Okay. I do okay. That okay. 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 Because I was gonna say, okay. Sorg, he didn't okay. know the shield reformed. You're okay. giving away spoilers. Well, I didn't know they reformed from but the past. I did remember that ago. Ambrose came back. Atati, you're saying? Yeah, Drew Gulak. I like him as well. Uh, he does, and maybe some of the people in the chat know this as well. But he actually, when he wins a match, he in sign language he signs for a better 205. And somebody That's had called him out on it and asked him what he was doing, and he yeah. said that he wished it was more inclusive, that uh, aud- you know, more audiences could respect uh, this as a form of art if it's more inclusive to, to folks that you know have uh, uncommon circumstances. So he signs for a better two hundred five live huh. for for a better wow. two hundred five. That's amazing. So, so if you ever see him do like weird hand stuff, well, I shouldn't have said that. That's mean. If you ever see him doing uncommon hand stuff, it's because he's 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 not like it's not weird. He's actually bringing in an audience, and mm-hmm. and he had said that on Twitter somebody added him, and he had said that uh, you know that's why he's doing it. He says that more people need to do stuff like that. So from when he said that, dude is just a good guy. He's yeah. one of my favorites, but that even put it over the top. He's really awesome. We recently had a conversation with his brother as well up at mm-hmm. Waterweight last uh, last time they had a Waterweight wrestling. Yeah, up in Cleveland, um, great crew over there, and and he's, he's a, he did a lot of fun stuff in uh, in uh, Chikara too. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. I, he's good. Like he, he comes off like a serious guy, but he does a lot of good comedy too. So. Well, there's a lot of in that character that Drew Gulak character. There's a lot of there's a lot of different stuff that he he mm-hmm. he's able to do. He's a diverse enough person that he could do a comedy sketch and come back from it and still be a badass oh yeah and that's like it's not that well, common of a thing and that's great that he's able to do that because when i first saw him he was doing just kind of straight up grappling right yep. like there, there was a, a certain like i forget what which um like a timothy thatcher type of vibe yeah yeah, yeah. and but it, but it was like a group of uh, like the the promotion was basically doing yeah. that so mm-hmm. i and see you know no character it was just basically like they're trying to do something that looked like mma yeah right right um so uh you know it, it's really cool to see him grow out of that too mm-hmm. um tina's saying it was cool to see something that uh drew started in T- Z- czw come to fruition in wwe i think he's talking about the the the, the mm-hmm. kind of you know, better 205 Live part. Yeah, too. and uh, yeah, so Drew has been doing a lot of different stuff, and you could put him in a lot of different things. And mm-hmm. uh, I was hoping he was going to be Cruiserweight Champion, but Larry, I, didn't, I know you didn't see that, but he's still not the champ. Cedric is. Yeah. Cedric's still the champ? Cedric's yep. the champ. Still. Now, Cedric will be taking on Buddy Murphy in Australia here in a couple weeks. If he makes weight. If, if he makes weight, yes. That's a great... I love that making weight stuff. I think yeah, that's such a yeah. good way. It's a unique way to get him in and out of matches because he could be like, sorry, didn't make weight. And then and they make Can't a big deal it. about it. he's like just barely he cut all this weight to do it. So yep. it's believable that he would miss it every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So uh, Tina's actually saying it wasn't day, uh, Drew in a tag team with Timothy Thatcher for a bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 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 So, mm-hmm. That makes sense. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so really good stuff. I, I, I So. Well, hit and miss stuff. I don't know, uh, Mike. Do you have another? There, there was a, there was two truths and a lie in the chat room. If we want to use that. Oh, I, 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 Sorg, I can come up with a million. <laughs> Sorg, I, all right. Um. Oh boy. Okay. Um. So fact the first. 
Um, Samoa Joe presented a story uh, story time book about putting AJ to sleep and stealing his family. Stealing his family? Stealing his family. Okay. Uh, fact the second, Brie Bella is the new John Cena. What do you mean by that? That seems subjective. Uh, in that she can wrestle on both brands. Okay. 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 Fact the third... Um. Oh no, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> wow. Talk about what? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, all right, fact. All right. Uh, fact the third. Kurt Angle has turned heel against the Shield. Mm. What? What do you think, Lair? Where are you at? Where are you at on this? I think. The Kurt Angle thing's a lie because they're not clever enough to do something like that. Mm. Okay. You you have figured they're out they're not gonna they're not they're not gonna make Kurt Angle a heel. Yeah. That okay, you are correct. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember correct. what the first fact was, but what was the first fact? They were, they were facts. All of them uh, were Samoa facts. Joe had a nighttime story about putting AJ asleep and stealing his family. That's great. <laughs> I would love to watch that. There, every time uh, some mojo That's comes good. out Any, now, yeah. He anytime with, he talks, I'm, I'm okay. Every time with that. he's out, he starts with "Hey, Wendy," and it's the greatest thing ever on SmackDown. Yeah, and, oh. yeah, and talks about how he's gonna uh, he's gonna be a better dad to. He wants so to, much to, to, his kids and to AJ father is. AJ's kids. It's yeah, just a God. giant angle about Samoa wanting to father. Another. Are they taking over the the I'm your poppy? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it it's trying. a more it's a more yeah. vicious. I'm your poppy. Yeah, it is. It is. It, but, no, it's not. It's not. I'm your poppy. It's I'm your daddy. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like, positive. Like, I'm like your poppy. Literally. I'm positive that I will be your poppy. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is probably the best stuff going on right. Okay. Now. Yes. Um, and it, it's uh they 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 had kind of a goofy finish to uh on Hell in a Cell, but uh, I'm I'm okay with it. Like, Every AJ Styles championship match has had a Were they in a it Hell is. in the Cell it match? Is, it has lately. No, they were not. No, they were not. No they, no, they weren't. Were they in a regular match? Yes. With rules? Yes. Yes. And there was a no there was a DQ the month before. So So why would wait? <laughs> Hold on. Common sense Hold is on. broken. They did the yes. DQ. They 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 got a DQ in the first match, and then the uh-huh. second match that's at Hell in the Cell. They have a normal match. Yeah, because yep. because Hardy and Orton had a hell in a cell Which match. Which got a DQ? No, 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 no. Uh, he pinned him. He he pinned him by doing that kind of Bret Hart over thing while he was in a submission. Um, like he was in he was in like the clutch, like the Kona clutch thing, and he 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 backed him up and and pinned him. Oh, okay. But if you see from a different angle, he's tapping Joe's side at the same time. Okay. So he like sort of tapped while he was pinning him, and the ref didn't see the tap. So now there's like this goofy thing that happens okay so yeah you, you with us yeah yeah, yeah. this is yeah. What, this is the deep story he's got it he's, he's got, got it, it. Yeah. all right yeah. i want to get into some more news and stuff i think oh, we got okay. larry caught I, up I, I a could, little I bit kept going. Uh, we could have but, but yeah. this is a different show we'll, um, we'll try again next week we'll try again next week Gotta ease me into this we'll just make you watch uh the <laughs> last two months of uh this week in wwe until you're uh, no uh, i'll yeah, oh no 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 sorg you won't see me for another two weeks your sorg as someone who has had to watch a few this week in WWE's in a row for an undetermined reason, please don't do that to Larry. Do the, no. I would like to point out that I still do not have the WWE. No, network. no. But you did um, watch All In. What did you think of that All In? I did. I watched it on New Japan World. Uh-huh. So it had uh, subtitles. I also watched it on your New Japan World. Wait, it's in English? Um, no, it had Japanese subtitles. Oh, it had Japanese subtitles. Gotcha. Uh, no, All In was great. Amazing. Yeah. So, so Larry, one more question for you. Okay. Uh, it regards all in. Okay. Is Pharaoh the Siberian Nightmare a good boy, the goodest boy, or the best boy? I got to be honest. I didn't see that one. Yeah, I don't know. That I one. think all three. That, that's all three. thank you. That's the correct Which answer. Which one was all three? That's Cody. It's Cody's puppy. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh. I don't know if anybody heard about the the dog spot at all in, but the original dog spot was for Cody to walk backstage, pet the dog, and go to the ring because that was his match. It was an ad lib that he was not actually going to originally bring the dog to the ring, but when the dog was on camera, it got a big enough pop that in his head he knew that it would work. So he 
takes the dog out with him, but that wasn't a planned thing. He just heard the dog get a pop. And if you go back, you could actually see Brandy, like look at him like you bring in the dog and he has like a little look that's like, yeah, I'm going to bring the fucking dog. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so they, it's, so the dog got a big enough pop. And in that moment, that's why he took the dog to the ring. Beautiful, beautiful Jeez. art, beautiful art, Amazing. beautiful art. Amazing. And, um, I, I believe like, I forget what the charity was, but Pharaoh, because he's the goodest boy, raised a shitload of money for charity. Yeah. During the all in thing too. Oh yeah. Apparently best dog what, ever. What charity? Like like I think I think they charged him for pets. Ah, <gasps> that's amazing. <Yeah. laughs> that's way better than would you like to donate a dollar to a uh, random charity when I'm making an RV's order. See? Yeah, it, it was like it was like a it was like a um like a uh I think it was some kind of animal shelter thing. You need to tell that to all the indie wrestlers around here. When they're instead of like selling like t shirts and shit, mm-hmm. just bring your pet to work and have them like take photos and pet, pet your dog. Pet for a buck. Yeah, pet for a buck. It's mm. not bad. It's not a bad idea. That's I hope somebody's listening out there, guys. Yeah. Hey guys, speaking of indie wrestling, I'm gonna throw out a shout. Uh over at indie wrestling.us, kind of a sister site of ours. We got the indie mayhem show over there. I mentioned Sam Adonis recently on that. Also, we have some uh, a lot of stuff going on on demand. We just added a bunch of the old best of for IW. You see, I know people have been picking up the very European, the uh, best of for Claudio Casagnoli. Now, the uh, uh, of course Cesaro in the WWE, uh, including Nigel Nigel McGuinness is on this one in the Nigel first match. Nigel McGuinness, yeah, look, look, Cesaro with hair back in the day, taking oh. on a Brent Albright, which uh, I believe he was a shooter. Oh, what else? Shooter, what? Um, I'm not sure. The or Gunner Scott, Gunner Scott, he was in WWE. Uh, when he was around a lot of great stuff there go check it out it's on our vimeo page for indie wrestling.us links over there hit the video on demand button best of aj styles volume one and two here in the pittsburgh area as well as best of cm punk from a good like 2002 through 2004 a lot of matches with a lot of guys you recognize best of johnny gargano from uh prime cuts prime wrestling up in cleveland the tv show that ran up there for a good long time uh, check it all out, IndieWrestling.us. And, of course, this week on the Indie Wrestling Network, you can start your seven-day free trial, five ninety nine dollars a month. We just uh, unleashed Welterweight Wrestling. Welterweight Wrestling 4 is going to be on iPay-Per-View on Fight TV this weekend. Uh, but you can check out the first one with your free trial or if you're already subscribing there. And, of course, the latest episode of Hardcore Memories with Duke and Doe, part two of talking about Raven and his effect on uh professional wrestling and ecw and coming up there's going to be a two-part series the guys just put in the can for the sandman um and a lot of a lot of personal stories about the sandman from uh shirley doe on there as well duke davis shirley doe uh some uh, g- guys that are be- the two generations of pro wrestling shirley doe of course came up alongside a lot of these guys in ecw and was there in person for a lot of these big moments that we talk about with ecw so we get a lot of perspective from that um and i got a lot of great stuff on the cutting room floor we're going to put some extras out um including uh, apparently about a, a bachelor party in la uh that Shirley doe talks about Sick. And, and duke davis has advice for strippers um so that's stuff that's going to come in the coming weeks here and uh keep an eye out on there uh to see what other releases we have going on scheduled next week we're going to be of course that next episode of hardcore legacy of hardcore memories and we're going to be releasing the hardcore legacy which is going to be a lot of uh footage um not often seen footage of a lot of ecw guys from a kind of an alternative place uh promotion where uh, a lot of the ecws came through back in the day back in their prime so stay tuned for that um indie wrestling.us hit up the network 5.99 a month and of course all those on demand titles over on our vimeo page as well starting at uh, a lot of times 2.99 for rental or purchase so uh go check it out indie wrestling.us so like i said there was a lot of um there's a lot of news this week just kind of dropped on us it feels a lot of dropping of course mixed match challenge i believe premieres tonight we just found yep. out that alexa bliss is injured apparently uh, just for the first week. Just for the first week. So her, she's going to have a one-week replacement of Ember Moon with Braun Strowman, which is interesting. Um, they, they're called Monster Eclipse, which makes no sense. Sure. Monst- well, they, only, they, should be, they should be the moon monsters. They only had a day to write it. Come on. That's right. That's right. It, I, it took me two seconds to write moon monsters. Well, maybe. The, they should be the Beauty and the Beast, right? 
that's where it is. That's where the money is, the Beauty and the Beast, the tag team. I'm pretty sure that's copyrighted by someone else. No, yeah. I've never heard of it before. I haven't either. <laughs> Jeez. That's why we get Little Big, Team but, Little Big. But for the Alexa other Bliss, I don't know uh, if anybody saw that, but they, Kayfabe, they have, they're saying that she's with Braun Strowman, Kayfabe. Mm -hmm. But they also, and this is Kayfabe and non Kayfabe, she's with Buddy Murphy. And so WWE.com, the website, has two different articles. In each article, one she's together with Buddy Murphy, the other one she's together with Braun Strowman. And they're still both up and current in Kayfabe. Yeah. The Kayfabe is that. And I don't know that anybody, I mean, obviously, uh, fans know yeah. um but i'm saying like i don't know that anybody at the dot com realizes that they they have already said in kayfabe i mean they're together in real life sure but on the website buddy murphy and her have videos together yeah. together yeah and then now they've posted braun Strowman and alexa bliss are actually a thing which they're not he, you know he just doesn't ask her what she does on monday nights that's right i guess so but i just As thought that was here. weird that even man <laughs> even they they break kayfabe like, and, they, and they do all the time. There's, there's a storyline. I, I don't know. There's like maybe a designation on their writing on there, or may, maybe there isn't. Maybe they're just doing everything you yeah. know as they go. But there is like this is the real life of so and so, and right. this is what's happening as it pertains to Raw. Yeah, it, it's Lana with an accent. Some segments like on hard, television yeah, accent. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah everything she has, else. She, now. Like when when you push people to stuff like everyone's Instagram feed. Yeah, mm -hmm. total divas like. What you're you gonna expect? blur. You're yeah. gonna blur the lines. So you, you blur it a bit, I, and this is something that I know. You know, talking with indie wrestlers, they have that thing too. Because I, we I, certain certain guys, when we have them here in the studio, like you know, I like to have the hey, how did you get into wrestling? Get sure. you, da, 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 what's your philosophy on what you're doing? Da, da, blah, blah, blah. And then some people want to be like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. don't think that like who they are is as interesting as who their character is, right? Mm -hmm. And and don't want to go there. You know, it, it's yeah. and I think it's. You know, Undertaker, it doesn't make sense to see him not being the Undertaker, yep. but then John Cena is a John Cena, right? It's not too far from who he is, so why mm -hmm. ignore yeah. who he is? Yeah. Right? Because that, that's, yeah, exactly. So that's it, a good way of putting it, because that's what, who he, we don't want to see Mark Calloway. You know how gross that is to see Mark Calloway pictures mm -hmm. and not under, like, not, you know what I'm saying? Like, it feels gross, because you're like, oh, that's, a, that's the Undertaker. I want to see the Undertaker, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. I don't want to see... His life, yeah, I, I get that. And it, it God, it's... could you imagine if The Undertaker had a Total Diva show? Oh, I never Total it. Taker. <laughs> it would be, <laughs> a, it would be like, Ugh, I did not watch. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't watch <laughs> any of it. I don't watch any of those, but I do have an appreciation for folks who do mm -hmm. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That would be hilarious. Uh, well, I always like, like it because Kane stopping by for breakfast, like the unwanted, yeah, brother that. Mayor. And mayor. Then, <laughs> yeah, he mayor, just stops by the for the Kane, mayor, the unwanted brother, mayor. He just stops Burnham. by every day for a vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the subtitle under under Kane whenever he does a confessional is mayor, brother, former burn victim. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so out of the out hashtag of the, feel the burn. So I know Larry, you haven't uh watched in a little while, but if we are talking WWE um, out of the folks who who have been watching WWE, do you have a favorite brand right now, and is it still NXT? Yes, <laughs> that pretty much is that, um, is that fair. Uh, I I'm not as current on NXT right now, unfortunately, but I I've really been digging what SmackDown's been doing for the yeah, most part. Yeah, interesting. I mean, it, it's it's always been Raw is we get we get we get back to this so many times I know, but Raw is 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 made as a that is the broad capture people nobody's sitting around for mm. three hours and they know it kind of thing and and that's stuff that i've heard from people close to the matter right it, yeah. it is you know somebody told me recently like they think in 15 minute increments basically mm -hmm. you know if they got you for 15 minutes and they get that you know they recap and they got whatever and they sold the three things coming up and this is this is where it's getting tiring mm. is we're selling three shows at a time for you sure yeah we we already have a match booked for tlc when's tlc Wait, Wait, really in December, on the like from tonight, yes, that's what is it? Strange. The finals of the mixed match challenge. Well, I mean, that's, that's... not horrible. No, 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 Why? no. Why? No. No, but but it's a little different because that's just like foreshadowing rather than planning. Yeah, but it, but it's also telling us that hi, 
Mixed match challenge is going to be on for three months. Yeah. yeah. We, we already kind of knew it was going to be around for 10 weeks. No. Oh, what was God. the first one around for? It seems so long. Well, the first one, I, geez, I think they did about eight weeks of, of Yeah, stuff. but they do, they only did one match per show. That's right. That's right. Now, this is now two matches per week. It's going to be a half an hour. So it's actually a really good replacement for 205 Live while I'm editing the show. Um, and that's, what, that's why I mentioned, because I'm saying NXT is my favorite WWE brand mm-hmm. still. 205 is getting closer. I'm mm-hmm. a big 205 mm-hmm. fan. There's not many on there that I dislike. Now, that's what do you something. think about this this thing that's happening that 205 got bumped to Wednesday now? It's now, it is now not live, uh, yeah. but it's going to be pre-taped on, on Wednesday They're at They're going to get seven. a better crowd, though. You They're going to get a crowd. And what I, I, I have no idea as to why they didn't do this in the first place, but why wouldn't 205 be before SmackDown? That's what, right. That's what you Because go- then, it, then it wouldn't be live. I guess, but it but also could, could be. But you could put it anywhere on the network. You, but, well, well, when you're going to put it at 7, which you're doing anyways tomorrow. Is it a studio show now, or are they still filming it when they film SmackDown? I think they're still on SmackDown. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they're at still, least that getting, night. That st- still and, getting the and, same crowd. And I wonder I wonder if they're going to flip it now, because you know, for them to do another 45-minute show after a half an hour of, of Mixed Match Challenge... Like, how does that play no on the East there. Coast, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no that, one's going to be there. That wouldn't work out so, for the live. So, so I live. wonder if, if it's a, you know, in certain places, they'll stick that before the show. Next match will take the place of the dark match, maybe. Yeah, It yeah. sort of did the last time I was around. But with, with Raw, you have Raw in for three hours, right? It goes to 11. With SmackDown, you have it to 10. I don't understand why you just don't do SmackDown 9 to 11 and have 205 Live be the the curtail you into smackdown so you have 205 yeah. live it's well, I, live i'll tell eight. you i'll tell you why because usa network really likes smackdown as a lead into whatever they want you to watch that's a good point too that's yeah. because you're yeah, not gonna you, do it yeah usa runs a lot of commercials for the purge on smackdown yeah, don't, yeah. Ask, don't ask me how i know how many they run and like sanity is a it's walking a commercial for the purge because they're purge people that's, like, exactly. that's their whole thing is they're purge people. yeah yeah where's that connected crossover thing you know yeah like like elias at pizza hut um, you know, uh, playing on it, stage. Sorg, it was Domino's. It was mm-hmm. Domino's? He was actually was it Domino's? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Sorg. I, no, no, no. Sorg. I th- I'm pretty sure his was a Pizza Hut commercial. Sorg. Then... Sorg. Trust me. <laughs> it was Domino's. That's right. Bad Mike with his insider. I, 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 I would a, just I, say, you know, and it, you know, we don't talk about <laughs> too much on the show. You got the scoop, But huh? Mad Mike, he's got the scoop. Mad Mike uh, has, has been on assignment. And yes. he, if you want to know the most meticulous little things about Monday Night Raw and SmackDown and much of the WWE programming, I'm just going to tell you, Mad Mike is your guy. Yeah. Oh, I'll break, I'll break it the fuck down for you. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe, I mean, I feel like eventually we need to have like a Mad Mike, like like WWE by the numbers or something like that uh, as part of the show, because I feel like it's just, the, it's a ready-made segment for you. It it really is. So you got the scoops, huh? Break break out the ice cream. You got the scoops. He knows. A guy. Um, I, I I I wouldn't say I'm a full like um like 31 flavors, but you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. I could see about yeah. 28 in you. I could see that. That's good. That's good. I was gonna say maybe. I was gonna say maybe more of like a Neapolitan ice cream, like three flavors. But sure. Yeah, I, I okay. got. Yeah. That's good uh, enough. His partner is saying that Raw and SmackDown have uh, melded me. Uh, really hate the Purple Show. The Purge Show. Yeah, I, I hear that. No, Just no, think of no, all the no, good. No, the Purge. No, 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 oh, oh, the Purge Show. I thought you said Purple. Yeah. In my mind, he was he was, he was was mixing the red and blue bands. You, <laughs> if you want to know, uh, speaking of 205 Live, and this is probably something I don't think anybody's thinking of, I'm not going to take it, so it's yours. It's to the Wrestling Mayhem Maniacs out there. A sick costume for Halloween would be the guy from 205 Live. That little like lucha guy that runs around that's in all their pieces. Oh, the like, little ninja guy. The yeah, little yeah, ninja guy. Awesome. Yeah. Wait, Somebody what? needs to dress up Hold as on. the 205 Live ninja guy. Yeah. 205 has I'm, a midget I'm, now? No, a ninja. Ninja. No, ninja. A ninja. Brother. You're so insensitive, Larry. <laughs> Why? You said ninja. I didn't hear that. And it's little I, person. I've it's honestly, person, I'm honestly shocked that that they haven't made that costume and just have that character. So, I don't think anybody's live. thinking of it. If you've ever seen 205 Live, the, like the intros, like the intros. Oh, that guy. Yeah. That yeah. guy. Yeah. Bump, oh, that guy okay. bumping around. I thought you said, I thought you were saying there was somebody on the show that was actually that character. That's what I'm oh, hoping. Oh, God, in I life. wish. Yeah. No, that's, that's what, what we're, we're recommending. 
Yeah, but that's a Halloween costume out there that somebody needs to do. I'm not going to do it. I've already thought of mine, so you need to take that. But that's something you could take that to the bank. You'll be the only one at the Halloween party dressed as a 205 Live guy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> also, you let's have to be see. able to do the flips, though. We got, we got, of it's course, important. coming up. Um, we have an Australian show. We have a uh-huh. women's pay per view coming up. Hell yeah! And the WWE is set to and and uh, we'll prepare. You're going to hear groans from Mad Mike. Uh, the WWE is going back to Saudi Arabia. Is a whole different large stadium. Um, for WWE Crown Jewel. Less than a week after. Less than a week after Evolution. Um, <laughs> which, who the fuck planned that? Well, you got yep. the show with all the hey. women, and then you have the show right after with none of the women by law. So <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. So whatever you think about that, there's a lot of money. My favorite meme that has come from this is about how the Saudi Kingdom is throwing so much money at WWE for these shows. They are basically calling the shots as bookers. Yep. Of what they want um, on the show. Oh yeah, especially if you if you hear the rumors. What are the rumors? So, like, I don't know what the rumors. Wait, wait, we'll get to the, those. But, the, but to the point where people are saying, "Hey, Cody Rhodes said he he would support he would he would uh, uh, defend the NWA Championship anywhere in any promotion, maybe even a WWE someday." Hey, Saudi princesses, make sure you make that suggestion. It's so, like that kind of like people are yeah. suggesting what they want and say, "Hey, Saudi but, princess." But but Sorg, the thing is, they are doing that. Mm-hmm. But um. They also don't watch current wrestling. Yes. Yep. So that's why um, we have Undertaker and John Cena, and well, that's no, why they no, wanted no, no. Yokozuna because they're like yes, we want Yokozuna. That is why they wanted Yokozuna. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Seriously, they requested Yo. Yokozuna. Yes. They requested Yokozuna and the Ultimate Warrior. Yes. Oh, I want to see who they double as. No, Yokozuna. no, no. This sorry, isn't for sorry. this show. You know this is the is? last show. The last show. Their Royal yeah. Rumble. Oh, wait, oh, all right, hold back, hold yeah. back, pull, pull back. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Let me pull back a minute. So, well, yeah. so people that didn't maybe catch it, WWE Crown Duel. And so, what we do have already announced because of what happened at at Hell in a Cell and everything, we will have a triple threat match with Braun, Roman Reigns, and Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal Title. Um, a month and a half away. That's weird. Um, also, there is going to be the first ever tournament for the WWE World Cup. That would be that trophy that you see right there. Um, that's That looks a lot more durable than the last one. That does. That does, doesn't it? Yeah. I can't yeah. see and Braun breaking it, that easily. And it's not going to matter anything. Well, I mean, anyways, it is what it is. It might yeah. come it's with like a the belt. wrestling classic. Right? They had a tournament a because they had a tournament, right? Yeah. Um, so, so this is happening. We have a concept. It's a different concept. It's in a different location in Saudi Arabia. It's a whole nother thing. And I don't know the size of this arena, but again, we're it's another arena. It's in the my, capital of Saudi Arabia. In the capital. So it's going to be a big one. It's yeah. going to be another 40,000 probably. Yeah. Um, after doing uh, probably another 40,000 in Australia from the sounds of it. On oh, no. Of- uh, the Australia show holds, I think, at least 67,000. At least 000. 60. Okay. And, and they're probably going to fill it. Um, we're at this point, and who knows what who else they're talking to? Australia kind of came out nowhere. Yeah, like this is we've talked about this in the past on this show. This is that global expansion. We're gonna get a WrestleMania size show, seemingly every couple months, maybe mm-hmm. or something like this. Uh, this is this is a big next step for them. I don't can hate we, it. I just can wish we not was, though. I, I, I don't. It's not that I hate it. It's just I think if we killed the the sub pay-per-views and the stuff we don't really need if they did a show like this often it's not that i would hate it it's just there's so many damn shows that like who cares yeah, like yeah. i can't be watching yep. all it this dilutes content. It, it dilutes it usually like who yeah. cares but like, but, it, but it really feels like i'm watching back to hell in itself because we had a show that we'll talk about here in a little yeah. bit here uh, literally across the street and uh and i'm watching back at this thing and i'm like like the hell in the cell felt more and more like you know other than no commercial or okay less commercials yeah. and and having full matches and everything like that it still felt like a raw yeah in a little bit of the storytelling and presentation well i mean yep. it was more of a smackdown there were only three raw matches well the the <laughs> hell, the, the hell in the cell was red so it reminded me of raw uh, just yes. because of just because of brand Remind, yes. reminded me of a fire hydrant yeah. <laughs> also no, it, red. It, was just, it was a milk crate. Just turned upside yeah. down. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you 
found yep. it. Just you like found the rest of us, the rest, just like the rest of us, um, uh, poor kids would do a hell a, a cage match back in the day. Mm-hmm. And just put that over the ring, and you're good to go. Do you think they made it like fire truck red just so that it wouldn't match the Hell in the Cell toys that are going to be coming out now? Yeah, even yeah. make it look even they're gonna more make realistic. a new toy there, there's definitely oh, gonna be a new toy yeah, no, 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 have I, don't, okay. I don't know where they're gonna sell it do you remember no, the term there's no toy stores anymore do you remember that i forget which i forget which Amazon. show lampoon this but the the, the term toylicious where you just have like different things in a show or a movie like think batman and robin how everybody had a vehicle and now those are all obviously going to be toys like wwe wwe just is literally booking things to be toylicious yeah at this point. Well, do you remember what the what did they do last summer? They did the the, uh, the shark cage. The shark cage. They did Ruffle Toylicious, baby. They they did Orton in Jinder Mahal in the Punjabi prison. Mm-hmm. Toylicious. Like they just do that. Mm-hmm. But the yeah, the, the shark cage is the one I was thinking of first. They're, that they're just doing matches for toys. Did they yeah. do Braun Strowman they're even in the doing, semi truck? They're even doing toys of like things from the past. Mm-hmm. Like there is a toy festival of friendship set. Mm-hmm. Ah. There yeah. is a there is a toy awesome. Ambrose Asylum cage match. Yeah, with that comes with the potted plant. <gasps> yep. Yes. Oh, it's a Harvey. Yes. Yeah. Um. Frank. I think. Frank. Frank. That's yeah. right. I think. And coming soon to a an Amazon near you. There's going to be a Milkomania toy set. Oh boy. Yes, oh, and boy. it comes with two different Stephanie McMahon figures. <laughs> one dry, one wet. One milk. Oh. One milk. Oh. This is pretty good. Yeah, I, I say also coming through a lot of thrift shops near you, Toddy. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Give it two years. I'll be, I'll get milk Stephanie McMahon. Mm. Throw it to the studio here. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would be a weird thing just to be sitting in the window and with no context to it. Just no. a, milk, yeah. a milk woman. Oh. Yes. A milk like, woman covered it, in milk. It, it comes with a hose that has like plastic translucent milk spraying out of it. So you Damn. can literally recreate the scene. Oh, Milkomania Mattel came right up in my. Uh, oh, no. Oh, oh, yeah. No. Oh, oh yeah. My. Bring it on. Oh, oh there yeah. it is. There Bring it, is. it on. Uh-huh. Heck yeah! Uh, and, and and Stone Cold is wearing the like bad WCW. Um, yes, he you know. is. But it doesn't. It, does it have his two Stephanies in this one? It should. Yeah. Probably. It might, oh, oh I it, see. No, her head. It, it's a swappable it's a head. head. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a swappable milk head. I just okay. want the milk head. This is not. Can and, I just get a milk our head? Our phrasing is out of control. The, this episode. The, the billion dollar princess has just become a dairy queen. And I think. The milk, the truck is actually like I think it's a tin, but it's also I think the case that they come in. Yeah, it's a tin type. It, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. How much is it's that? It's very how, fancy how much, like, packaging. How, Mad Mike, how much they get in that throwing that for? That's got to be thirty bucks. That's got to be uh, fifty. I think. 50, I was about to say. I was going to say fifty. That's gonna a guess ringside it. collectible right there. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's up there. All right. Well, anyways, a lot of fun. Yeah, guys. But... Holy crap. Mm-hmm. Um. I want to give a shout out to our good friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza. They are our friends at Slice on Broadway, right up the street here. If you visit us in Pittsburgh, I hope you go check out some Slice. I know there's a few of you here in town, but I know there's a few people that maybe have a chance to visit uh, in the near future for wrestling events or whatnot. But please go check out our friends. They're at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's not hard to find. Here in our neighborhood, if you're visiting us at the studio, right up the street, Carnegie PA and the West End. Go check them out. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting. The perfect pepperoni pizza. But I already said that. Mm-hmm. PJH underscore Slice on the Twitters. Slice on Broadway.com. Let them know the mayhem sent you. And please don't kick the door down. Partner. We'll be back after this message with a big question. And Toddy and I are going to reminisce about some Lucha action in our neighborhood. Heck yeah. This past weekend. Yeah. I didn't even know. We'll get into that. Yeah. We'll be right back. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. So we are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem show here. 
And uh, we, we, we we need to double check because we kind of alluded to this rumor with Yokozuma. Yokozuma? Yokozuna. Yes, Yokozuna yeah. and, and Ultimate Warrior. But I want to touch on that before we continue with the big question here real quick. Mm-hmm. So what is the supposed rumor the, around this? Well, what had happened, it wasn't for this show. It was for the past Saudi show. Yeah, the, if, the, the greatest Royal Yeah, Rumble. the greatest Royal Rumble. Now, if you remember the, the, the bigger gentleman, the husky gentleman that was sort of like Yokozuna reminisced that they just used for the Rumble. Yeah. Well, the reason why they, they gave him work that night is because it was requested that they wanted Yokozuna and they were like shit so that's why they booked that big guy who wasn't E related and they just threw him in the match because they wanted Yokozuna. So they just found some random sumo wrestler and put him in the match Mad Mike well, yeah? No, no he, he, weren't, <laughs> he, was, he was a trainee at NXT Yeah yeah, he, but like, He's a trainee at NXT and they, so they, like, they didn't think anyone would notice uh, it's, it's, is, it, it's, is this like the other Diesel well, um, it, it was explained that Yokozuna is dead. Yeah, it, okay. it was explained, but I guess that they wanted somebody of that stature, body type, and feel. So Samoa they were just Joe's like, like that. Right, right, right. I and, think Samoa Joe's quite as big. Yeah. Like, and, well, okay, he's not as big. But and not he's that as same like, build. Not as gimmicky either. Like, yeah, not yeah. as like, he's more of just like, a, yeah, I'm a big guy, but that's not his bit. I guess. And so like. Yeah, so they had Yokozuna in the Greatest Royal Rumble, and it was just an NXT trainee that they pulled up. Could you imagine you're him? You get that call and say, "Hey, um, you're not on television. You're training. You're you, you know you're working on your craft. You want to be in the Greatest Royal Rumble? You want to work time? in front of forty thousand people in yeah. Saudi Arabia? Yeah. So that's that was why passport kid. That's that's why the the bigger guy was in that because <laughs> yeah. he he was Yokozuna for the night because the crowd wanted a Yokozuna. Jeez. So yeah, and that's that's why Rey Mysterio was in that. Mm-hmm. That's why the Undertaker was like, like they asked for the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, and they they got... wanted the Ultimate Warrior, and I think they wanted Hulk Hogan too. Who, who did they get in place of the Ultimate Warrior? Since I think new... they wanted like Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior, and said they're like, how about we give you Triple H versus John Cena? So it's like maybe maybe and I don't know maybe on their TV because you know they're not going to get raw as raw because of a lot of the content right, right? Uh, so maybe they're maybe getting yeah. maybe they're and, and dated it takes and dated. It's, it take it takes yeah. time to get apparently over it's there. really apparently it's really dated mm-hmm. maybe they have like a version of the network and it keeps it keeps showing like WrestleMania moments over and over again I think you're right they're seeing it. And they're like, well, this is what's happening. That's what we want is what's mm-hmm. on the TV. Yeah. And we want them... Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Yeah. 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 yeah I, th- I think they asked for Andre, too. That's we, why they, uh, we want, they no, want, they want really? this moment. They want this no, moment. And so right show, there. Big Show is in the match, right? What's that? Big Show? Big, uh, big Show is in the match, right? I can't remember. I don't, I don't remember. You, I, don't no. I, know, I know Mark Henry was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Big Show was, too. Yeah. Well, anyway. Anyway. It is time for the big question. And we're we're gonna be going down this rabbit hole. We know there's gonna be shows in Australia. There's gonna be more in Saudi Arabia. It's a bigger deal. Mm-hmm. A lot of money. A lot of money being thrown at this. What do you think, or would like to be, the next country that gets a big arena show that we see on the network? Hmm. That is a good question, isn't it? Huh? Personally, I want them to go full Japan Tokyo Dome. See, I was gonna hmm. say that, but then you said it. So then I can't. You can say also it. say it. I was going to say we can it. erase mine and post. No, I don't want to mean. I don't. I just doesn't. I don't want to <laughs> seem like I'm copying you. But I would say Tokyo Dome as well mm-hmm. because it's all. It's proven. Mm-hmm. It's proven. Mm-hmm. And, and there, I mean, their product is also popular. Over and they there. have Prince Devitt. They have Finn Balor. Mm-hmm. They have Nakamura. And guess who? Guess who could sell out the Tokyo Dome? Proven. Oscar, Kyrie Sane. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and again, it's that thing that I've been talking about. It's like, hey, we have this like, you know, people representing all these different countries. So yeah. when we go to the countries, you know, Betty Murphy and the Iconics, you know, hey, they got brought up just in time for this Australian show, right? Right. There you go. Uh huh. There you go. I would kill to see Oscar main event a show in the Tokyo Dome, mm. sponsored by the E. Mm-hmm. I, I would kill to see Oscar main event a show. Um, I would kill to see Oscar on television, not met, like not losing to Carmella. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Not. Yeah. All right. I'd say Tokyo um, Dome though. So Sorg, I I have the answer for this. The answer and the only answer, the Mad Mike answer. Yes. Is this, um, a, is this an inside baseball answer? No, no, heavens, no. Because this, no. this would this would never happen. Uh, yeah, slide so, those. So, Sorg, Sorg, 
one of the most criminally underrated WrestleManias. And not for match quality. The Boris Taylor but one? For, but for aesthetic. Don't say nine. Is WrestleMania nine? Yes! It is so It I is want, one of my favorite WrestleManias. I want a WWE Super Show <gasps> inside the actual Roman Coliseum. I want Corey Graves brought out in a on a sedan with Vestal Virgins. I want Michael Cole in a toga. I want Renee Young to be treated like Cleopatra. I want all of this happening. We can do it. I want a Roman gladiator demon Balor. You've sold me, man. I hated this before you said it. I even said it, and then you said it. I'm back. I'm back with you, man, Mike. I'm yes. back with you. Sold. I'm back with, sold. back with you, man. That was like, yeah, that's sick, dude. Everything you and, just said and, is so cool. Here's, here's the best thing. After every match, after every match, are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Tigers. You have Vince McMahon himself in his own booth. Oh, God. Giving the and thumbs down. If he gives the <laughs> thumbs down, the shield swarms the ring. Whoa. That's not terrible. I swear that's pretty good. I didn't expect that. That's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs down. OVE style. Uh huh. Sammy uh-huh. Callahan style. Oh, man. Yuck. But Larry, he, Matt, how about you? <laughs> Top that. It's Larry. Good, it's gonna be hard Welcome to follow that mic on that though. But you try it. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's like, I think it'd be cool if they did Wembley Stadium again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. New uh, Yankee Stadium. I don't know. Antarctica to go perform in front of some penguins. What? <laughs> yes. There, that's an answer that yeah, exists. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, that's a thing. There. That's a thing. <laughs> I'm on board. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. That's that's the best I can come up with. I can't. Re- I really can't beat the Roman Coliseum. Coliseum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, unless, unless they're, I don't know, doing something with the Great Wall of China. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, I think China's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to. Either you're going to have a lot of similar human rights conversations as Saudi Arabia. Get, get ready for that Ho Ho Loon main event. Oh boy. Oh <laughs> boy. Wrestling school. Yeah. Yes, yes. Anyways, let us know your uh, your your answer to uh, what what venue you'd like to see internationally, much in the style of what we've been seeing lately. Well, guys, I want to give a shout out to our friends who've been supporting the show. Uh, Pro Wrestling's a wild and crazy art form, and Occupy Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting you smart back in smart work. Go check them out, OccupyProWrestling.com, and they got a lot of great merchandise over there at WhatAManeuver.net as well, and great supporters of the show. They got a lot of our stuff up there and a lot of other uh, affiliates as well. Go check them out, OccupyProWrestling.com. Toddy. Yes. You and I had an experience this weekend. Together, yes. but not together. Together, fact, but separate. It's, yes, together, but separate. <laughs> yeah, our own thing. <laughs> it was hilarious. So we had Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh across the street. It was amazing. I didn't know Toddy was there until I was going back through the matches later that night, doing some fix-ups about the, you know some of the stuff. I wanted to redo some of the matches because eh, it was crazy. There's a yeah. lot going on. Those trios matches got pretty nutty. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm going, and somebody does a flip and ends up in the crowd, and then I just see... I just see Toddy out there giving the peace sign <laughs> to Jason to, Kincaid. To Jason Kincaid evolves own Jason Kincaid. Yes. So I kick it. I kick the image over to him. And was like, "Hey, I just found out you were at the show." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my loser ass went by himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. Lucha Fiesta 2018 hits Pittsburgh, PA. Ultimo Dragon was there. Uh, the first Sin Cara was there. Mystico. I don't know what they're... Caristico. Uh, Caristico is his name now, yeah. Yeah, Ultimo Dragon, Caristico, okay, Sam Caristico Adonis. Caristico is the only thing I actually kind of say with like the proper inflection on it. Uh, yeah. Caristico. I heard it all day enough that I, like, I, I, I'm just with it. Sam Adonis was there, and I don't know what was going on. I mean, you may know more than I, but he kept going in and out of the backstage area like every five minutes like before the show. I'd see him walk the same path back mm. and forth, back and forth. I, maybe he was just getting ready, but he was in that main event, uh, working the heel gimmick there mm-hmm. too, uh, going over well. 
Oh, it, it was, well, Sam, I think we, we talked about it on the Andy Mayhem show, but Sam was actually kind of the promoter of the show. Uh, oh, under, uh, it, it, yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't catch the, that kinda, your show this week on that. Yeah, we were talking about huh. it a little bit. So, so he was he, you know, had a lot of the, a lot to do with the setup and everything there. Uh, Bless so, him. So yeah. he was in the he was in the promoter like. Oh, I knew something was <laughs> out, like I knew something, and I'm not saying it was wrong. I'm merely saying like I knew something because he just kept going back and forth and back and forth and this and that and this and pointing over here and do this. That's really cool. Yeah, I didn't catch the show with him on it. I apologize, but I knew you could mm-hmm. tell that something he was on something. Yeah, like, he was not, good on something. It, it was not something we were putting out there like like widely. Yeah. Uh, but definitely when we got into talking about it and, and bringing the show here and everything. Um, yeah. So it was a lot of Ultimo Dragon, like you said, uh, you know, a lot of trios matches, you know, but it was that kind of Mexican feel to it. A lot of oh, local absolutely. talent, of course, was on it. But it was that, you know, this is a very Mexican community here in Beachview. So they, they got that. It was, you know, beer, tacos and wrestling. Action. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was awesome. Um, and uh, it, it's going to be it, and now I'm getting some some mixed signals on this, but it, it's supposed to be on Fight TV. It was supposed to be this Thursday, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure that it's going to happen this week. It might be next now and we will have details as soon as those have been confirmed. Um, but it is in the can. It's ready to go, and it was a blast. Is there any posters left from that event? I don't know. Uh, well, we have one around here. Should I? I'll, I'll put uh, it up there. for the sake of the camera. There you go. Um, like I said, it was it was a pretty good time. Um, and, and I say, you know, having been to something like a Lucha yeah. Underground. I got some pictures up here for you guys on video. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, it was it was that cool feel, like yeah. uh, Joe Gertner. Joe Gordon of uh, ECW fame was there, and he was he was pronounced he was doing all the uh, announcements in Spanish. Yes, he was. Um, as I you know, well, white guy Spanish because I don't think there was it was very mm-hmm. phonetically pro, uh, uh, pro, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, it was a lot of that. There were promos, and there was enough of a again that Mexican audience that a lot there was enough that knew it, like knew all the shockers chants. Yeah. Um, you know, and they had fun with it. Uh, uh, Gavel came out and wanted to see everybody's papers. Uh, that was <laughs> nuts. I love that. Uh, local talent, David Lawless, came out and uh, said that he's friends of ICE. Yes. Oh, my God. And the, the he, uh, excuse me, the face of the match uh, said, go fuck yourself at a family show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that was. Uh, Kayfabe. Oh, that, that is. But I, I understand, especially when some certain wrestlers of, yeah. of different types were out there, um, some um me- some spanish um slurs were being yelled yeah and again th- this is um i think the tone and this is stuff that happens in mexico sure right and uh and and that's I why thought it was great because yeah. like it's if you you have to think with individuals where english is their second language mm-hmm. they're probably if they're a wrestler they're probably going to know swears more than anything oh so, yeah so he was just like i'm gonna say words i know yeah and i was yeah. like that it was good their segment was really good mm-hmm. um Props to to David Lawless uh, for for hanging in there. I, I thought like going to uh, in the Mexican community, you know, as a heel, obviously it's kayfabe. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not like that, I'm sure. But like saying you're like friends with Trump and friends with ICE, I was like, holy cow, he's really like going for the jugular. Mm-hmm. And it's first time and again something that we talk with Sam a, a bit here. He, you know, before what we would see uh, uh, Sam Adonis here, you know, it, it, he's from here, brother of Corey Graves, of course. Yeah. His father promoted here in the area. We had a conversation with him on the indie wrestling uh, on the indie mayhem show. Uh, on the wrestling.net um, um, Dan Polinski is his name uh, the father and uh, well, I'm trying to bring up the video here unfortunately mm-hmm. uh, but uh, you know it was it was really cool to see that so it was cool to see um, you know Sam Adonis as the Sam Adonis that got him uh, popular or at least hated in Mexico <laughs> yeah you know the full-on American flag with the Donald Trump face on it and everything mm-hmm. uh you know was re- really good and him being the bad guy that was that was a lot of fun to yeah fi- finally see that you know in action mm-hmm. so yeah it was it was a lot of fun and uh some some of the uh uh I, I don't want to say it the, the 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 more the the more the lesser known talents I thought I thought performed at the level of the known talents, which mm-hmm. I always see at different events, and it's not always that case. And I thought at that the the lesser known talents uh, kind of lived up to you know you have Ultimo Dragon on the show, like it's a show, like you have to get out there. And so there was a lot of uh, the mm-hmm. lesser known talents that even were working their asses off out there. Uh, Lady Frost, mm-hmm. uh, she was billed as she she weighed as uh, ten thousand snowflakes was her build <laughs> weight. Lady Frost, uh, I really appreciate her. She's a great 
great. You know, I thought I, that was the, the ladies match was probably my favorite match, but mm-hmm. that's just because it, it, it was like a brawl. The match mm-hmm. was a brawl. It went everywhere. Um, Almost into the bouncy house. The bouncy house. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, I think the other one is the one that I think a lot of people are going to remember other than the main talent, of course, mm-hmm. beast man was everywhere at this thing. Beast man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a video that came up of him uh, doing a stare down with a small child that uh, we had an amazing picture of, we pulled from this that has been going around. Uh, he, he, he was so good. He was with kids. He was. He had a lucha mask for a so while. So wild. And of course, he's been. He's been really kind of on fire lately because he's been doing these videos of him just like busting into like like convenience stores and and KFC and stuff like that. And he licked uh, her face. He licked her yeah, forehead yeah. in front of her mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right in front of her mom. It could have went so many different ways. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It could have been went so many different ways, and everybody just went okay. This but, is. This uh, is good. I think he also snook a splash some kids in the bouncy house. Yeah, I think he did too. Yeah, damn. Uh, there was a, there was a lot of fun stuff happening there. So it was a good time. It seems like, and it was just really cool to see that. You know, it was. It, it, I guess say for me, you know, I geez, you know, I was working. We were of course doing the video, and I'm, I'm live switching it and everything. Yeah, and 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 I caught myself just smiling, just be you know, just seeing that amount of people there, um, in this neighborhood coming together mm-hmm. of every you know culture you know uh there could have got weird and it didn't it, <laughs> you know what? that's one way to put it could have got weird and it didn't because white people suck and they were fine here but i feel like if you were if you were explicitly going something that was listed as a lucha show i don't think the sucky white people like uh, they went not go down know. this road but <laughs> all, no all i'm saying is it could have got weird and it didn't yeah no it was great it was great there was one fight that got broken up and two guys got thrown out during I a wrestling saw that. match i i think wasn't one of them wearing a lucha mask <laughs> They were well. They were drunk for sure. Oh, they were. They were the ones we caught dancing earlier, and we're getting some footage of them. Yeah. Well, the shots. thing the thing was that they were actually a fake fighting because the the, the match went over into their corner of like right. A it, lot. it was like a trios match that kind of went everywhere, right? Yeah, and they were fake fighting, and mm-hmm. so when security came to break it up, the security was like awful rough with them, and they were just like, "We're fake fighting," and the guys like, "We well, got to get out of here." So they then real fought the security guards. <laughs> And so they didn't actually, it didn't end up that they got kicked out for fake fighting. When they thought it was a real fight, they started fighting the security guards. So the security guards are like, well, well, that wasn't a real fight, but they, this is. And, 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 good, and good props for them to having like a real security there too. Minutes. Like it, it, this it was, was minutes not... they were out. Like the whole confrontation was out. It, they were, they picked them up and threw them out, but they were fake fighting. And sometimes, you know, you work yourself into a shoot, brother. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> work yourself oh, into a shoot. Man. It was a good time. I, I won't get much into it. Uh, you can look up information. I, I'm sure they're going to put the link over at luchapittsburgh.com. It's going to be on Fight TV. Uh, keep an eye on the indie wrestling us uh, social media. Uh, we have a trailer up on anywhere you you follow us on Twitter. Uh, uh, follow indie wrestling us on Twitter. Facebook and YouTube of the action, so you can get a little peek at it. There's some gifts out there. There's the videos of Beastman out there from. And those are all from intermission, by the way. Like a yeah. lot happened at intermission. It was pretty fantastic. Uh, so go check. It was a. It was a. It was a blast. I, I mean, wrestlers and fans and people around the show that weren't even wrestling fans were just loved how everything turned out. Lucia Fiesta. I hope there's more. I hope there's I hope there more. is more. There's, there's talks. There's good positive talks happening from the sounds of it. Uh, and I'm hoping this this happens again and, and and this continues. It'll be a nice new beach view tradition. This is this is like, there, wrestling in this neighborhood is popping up, man. Like this is crazy. Yeah, right across from the studio. Crazy. No, like literally, we could see from where we're sitting where the ring was Absolutely. for the show. Absolutely, you could see the top in the hard cam shot. You could see the top of the studio. Yeah, from here, we it's- could Ultimo Dragon wrestled right there yes <laughs> yeah cool. yeah you, you can say yeah ultimo dragon was remember that right there you just stand in the parking lot like ultimo dragon was here ultimo yeah. dragon <laughs> was here baby ultimo dragon used this porter pot if only sunny ono was there to take pictures of the whole i occasion. know i know exactly mm. wow uh but anyways hey toddy this is usually the port where i plug your show yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and usually i say something mean about virgil yeah. But uh, I want to let you plug the show at this point. Yeah. I, I appreciate the plugs, by the way. You are a pretty good plug man. Thank like you. your intros and outros, some of the best in the game right now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. But Thrifty Podcast, it's on the uh, Sorgatron uh, Media Network as well. 
Um, what I do, I think I said a little bit earlier in the show, I uh, take some friends out with me and we gather a thrift haul. So we go to a Goodwill outlet, collect some stuff. We bring it back to my studio and or we've done some live streams here mm -hmm. and we uh, record an episode based on our findings. We usually have some music in the mix. Um, we've recently done a live show and in Pittsburgh, because it's Pittsburgh based podcast in Pittsburgh at the Roboto Project. We did a live show where we had live bands, live comedy. Um, you could check us out on Thrifty Podcast on Facebook.com, the website, Thrifty Podcast at Facebook.com, the website, at Thrifty Podcast on Twitter. Um, but if you go find us on Thrifty Podcast on uh, Facebook, you will be able to see Hard Times Thriftathon that was shot by a good friend of mine, Danny Behar, up in New York. Danny Behar, the guy who shot that, actually does Cash Cab. He, he really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he were, he uh, shoots for Cash Cab and edits for Cash Cab. Oh, crap! So I was like, "All right, brother, you're in." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I, you know, because he's just like, because we've been friends for a while, so I'd like I know his work, but you know, when I was looking for somebody to shoot it, I was it's like, no resume needed. Danny's in the mix, baby. Cash Cab Danny's, yeah. So he Cash edits. Yeah, so he's uh, so I wish Danny was here in Pittsburgh. I think he would add a lot to the uh, you know. Well, element. I just found it on the YouTube. So this is. This is, this is like a 20 minute thing yeah of you guys hanging out so what what <laughs> yeah there it is there's me and there's josh who josh last call larkin who is my co-host so what that is there we did a live podcast out of the front room first mm -hmm. and as the show would go on i would kind of bounce back between both rooms i would do stuff out here and then i would do live comedy on stage and then i would introduce bands um, I brought a piece of my hair because oh. I buzzed my head recently. I brought a piece of my long hair in a bag. Is somebody taking a nap on stage? What's happening? Yeah, there's like a somebody falling over on stage. But we had uh, Bluffs. We had, there we go. There's Bluffs there taking a break on stage. Um, we had Pittsburgh Band Yours. Um, the Ryan Thompson cassette tape project. Uh, it was great. Um, we're hoping to do uh more live shows like that that we're going to be blending comedy uh, music um and it also had a second hand sale because of course we're a thrifting show so we did sell some items out of the front there a lot of fun um rumors of a new one coming soon and it looks like nice. we're booking somebody cool from new york to be there too but out of pittsburgh and he documented the day and um you know had a lot of fun with danny so cash cab danny thank you so much for being a part of that but uh yeah hard time thriftathon yeah, go check it out on the uh, Thrifty Podcast YouTube channel. Why, why am I not subscribed to your YouTube channel? Well, I have like a, we, I have like a million YouTube accounts, so who knows what I'm on whenever admitted, I did subscribe. Admittedly, it's not the it's not like we only have like four, three or four videos up there because it's not yeah. the main component to what we do. So it's not like a big outreach on that yet. But mm -hmm. uh, the Thriftathon was actually like the first big piece that we want to do. But yeah, but it's like a, ten, a twenty minute mini doc. I talk in it. Um, I hear uh, it's good. Um, I mean, my opinion is it's good, but people also say that it is good. <laughs> and also go check out the live stream we just did before this show where you it was your uh, Spooksburg, Spooksburg live stream baby. episode with uh, 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 your friend from uh, Mr. Arm from uh, Trundle Mar Manor. It was spooky. It was goofy. I held, held a rusty meat cleaver at one point, mm -hmm. which is on my Instagram at Sorgatron on the, on the on the Instagrams. That was the first time I had a conversation with him in person. Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah. Like, I've always heard so much about Trundle Mander, and and that was cool to have him in person and showing off. Out of so, yeah, out of Swissville because I was just like, I want to do a Halloween episode. I want to bring in like I want to bring in a hired gun here to show off some secondhand items. So I hit him up. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to be. And so, like, the first time I actually met him was when I saw him and we were recording. <laughs> so I was like, cool, it ended up okay. And, of course, my buddy Jake was here, too. Thanks, Jake, for being a part of that. But, yeah, check it out. Um, we did a, yeah, Spooksburg. It's a live stream, Thrifty Podcast. On Facebook, we'll have that. Thriftypodcast.com is where you All listen right. and stream to the show. Well, it is time for everybody to find out what you learned from pro wrestling this week. Who wants to go first? I'll go. You want to go? Go later? ahead. He's back. I, oh, got, I got a lot. Uh, to all right. About. All right. He's, he's, he's processing. Toddy? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, what I learned from pro wrestling this week, um, I've been watching a lot of MLW. And what I began to appreciate about MLW, which is Major, major League Wrestling, is they're doing a, a specific type of brand that uh, under their umbrella there, they have like Pentagon, Phoenix, Shane Strickland, a lot of the types that you see out there in the indie scene. 
and they are uh, self-contained stories on MLW, and I always thought that I would dislike if I saw a character in, say, Lucha Underground doing a different character in, say, MLW, mm -hmm. and it is different, and I like it. I like, I, I like self-contained stuff here, and that's something that I didn't think I would like, but I, I like their universe, and it, it actually is okay to have self-contained universes in your own promotion. Also, Brian Pillman Jr. is there. He oh, has... yes. He's going to be a part of Welterweight Wrestling this weekend on, on the IP pay-per-view in Cleveland. Uh, I got to meet him. He's really awesome. Best hair in the business mm -hmm. right now. So that's what I learned. There's a War Games up there on their YouTube, it seems. Two rings. Wow. Yeah. True, true. And there's, um ah, geez, who's that guy? Havoc. Jimmy Havoc, is it? Yep, Jimmy uh, Havoc's there. He was there. just in the, um, I just saw him for the first time ever uh remote or in person yeah at uh blackcraft wrestling and the, at the gentleman over there in the other ring with the dreads that's fulton who used to be insanity on nxt yep. shane shane strickland yeah another good one yep jimmy havoc Cotto brazil so yeah they did that but mlw great stuff and again it's very self-contained so you will see these performers and other promotions doing different gimmicks who is this guy is that snoop i'm seeing here at Coto Brazil. Oh, Coto Brazil. Okay, yeah. I looked like the guy that one guy that was on the show on uh, Saturday. And then Sammy Callahan has a different this gimmick. This is in here. It's, wow. He has Sammy Callahan and the Death Machines, which are these two big dudes. Yeah, Snoop and Coto Brazil look a lot alike. Um, Shane Strickland's there. Um, Low Key is there. Mm. Low Key is actually their champ right now. Nice. Is he wearing the suit that he was in Impact? E, sort of, sometimes. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes and no. Yes, but then it comes off. I don't know. Measures. I don't know the story on the suit mode. Uh, uh, yeah, watch MLW. It's good. Yeah. It's it's e e all the episodes are on YouTube for free. It was a, somebody kicked me because somebody they were looking for a video editor. Like they had a job posting, and somebody's like, "Hey, you should apply." So I'm yeah. like, all right, yeah, you know. So like they're they're at that point. They're like, we want to hire a video editor. Like. Like, wow, what are you guys doing down here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that you're actually like mostly, hey, the video, the conversation between video and indie wrestling company is kind of yeah. a different kind of conversation. That's a different thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, that kind of surprised me to see that. But, mm -hmm. anyways, uh, Matt Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned that in WWE 2K19, I'm going to be able to make a stable called Friends of the Show. Mm. really it's gonna say it. yeah yeah there's a bunch wow i mean think about it between no my, my, you know who my stable is gonna be hmm. kurt angle elias mm -hmm. johnny gargano and ray Rowe. <gasps> you can get rid of the last one uh, well you can replace him with eric young yeah do that I, no I no <laughs> what <laughs> yes no why you don't own my game. True. You can't support that, man. Yeah, we can. No. Yeah, we can. No. Yeah, we can. No. He still owes me a title shot. He I have does. to butter him up. Well, you, now you can don't get butter him now up. You can Kick get him your, in the balls. Make him angry. Now you can. Now you can get your title shot in the game. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make myself, and I'm going to beat the shit out of Ray Rowe. <laughs> it comes together finally. Years ago. Years ago, and, um, Matt Mike way, called um, for a title shot what, when Ray Rowe was an IWC champion, we, I think. We, Mike, what's we, your entrance we music? To, we need to we need to commission Riz yes. to create the IWC type IWC title mm -hmm. on the uh on the download. But but like the crappy one from like back when he was the champ. Yes. Like not the cool looking one now. And then and then and then I don't know I don't know how to Twitch stream. I will try and figure it out. <laughs> and I will do a Twitch stream. Of Mad Mike beating Ray Rowe for the IWC. Death title. Row Mad Mike oh, in the mix. He will. He will retweet that. <laughs> oh, Mike, yeah. Because he still responds to your challenges. So. Yes, he does. <laughs> oh, What's your fantastic. entrance music? Yeah, what is your entrance what music? That? What's your entrance music? Mine? Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd probably steal EC3s. Mm. You need to plan... Yeah, you need to plan this out Larry, before did you, you jump into it. Larry, no, no, no. You know what? Basic sickness. Just write me an entrance. There you go, <laughs> Larry. You got one. I learned that after two and a half months away from WWE, I didn't miss a damn thing. Oh, <laughs> oh. Other than a red cell, <laughs> I learned that I still love a good fire truck entrance. Mm. Fair. I was at uh, our friends at KSWA in the Millville days. They did a two-day st stint there, Friday and Saturday. I went to the Saturday afternoon. I had some time, and uh, and and somebody um, 
was it, is it, is it, I think his name Mitch Napier. Yeah. Um, yeah. He local was guy. taking on Bubba the Bulldog, a local radio personality. He's a friend of the show. I was, I, I was one of their champs. I think the five-star champion. Um, and uh, he, he came in on a fire truck. The local volunteer fire department came into the ring with him, mm-hmm. and they turned it into a lumberjack match. That's really cool. So that yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Great wrestling. Mm-hmm. There are no less than three wrestling shows on Saturday alone in the Pittsburgh area. It's a lot of shows. PittsburghWrestling.com. There's some on Sunday as well. Swallowweight so Wrestling, our friends up there. Um, we will be doing via IndieWrestling.us the pre-show. So look for that stream, uh, the pre-show stream, to get an idea of what's going on leading into Welterweight Wrestling 4. Um, I believe, did we get somebody booked? I think next week we did do the reschedule. Charlie Deach of the Pittsburgh Current should be joining us next Tuesday for the show. Uh, we've been having, he, he wears, he tends to wear a wrestling shirt every time he comes in here. Um, and we had a, a, uh, former wrestler that used to be, I believe Jason, the terrible, um, in Florida, um, who now manages campaigns was with us on the Pittsburgh current podcast this week. Um, he's got a great story about how he helped take down Brian Blair. Yes. Hmm. Of the killer bees from office in, in, in in Florida. Sorg. Did he break his back and make him humble? Because I've heard that's I've heard that's the preferred method. That's I think he made him humble politically. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I made think, his career humble. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and he is the the story goes, and you can hear listen to the entire thing on the Pittsburgh Current podcast. I recommend it. But the but but he was he was uh, uh, managing um, a candidate, and I can't remember what the office was. You know, local something or other. Uh, the first, I think he was the first openly gay candidate in Florida mm-hmm. and yeah, in was. a very unfriendly, um, um, part of Florida for that and just handily beat him. Yeah. So wrestling's for everybody, baby. Wrestling is for everybody. And it's, it's a really cool story for real. Uh, go check it out. And he actually, actually asked him some wrestling questions on that, on that as well. Uh, that's episode two of the Pittsburgh current podcast. Uh, she could find there. Also a part of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Thank you so much, guys. Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. Absolutely. I will be lead, uh, live tweeting Lucha Underground at some point tomorrow night. Go to at Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM. Uh, Mutilator Larry, you can check out the things he does under an assumed name or darkforgestudios.co. Why is your, your mic's off? Sorry, I had a cough button on. That's nice. right. Yes, that is where you can find me. He does stuff. Mm-hmm. It's cool. That That's an awesome website. It is an awesome website. And of course, Toddy of the Thrifty Podcast. Thrifty Podcast at Thrifty Podcast on Twitter. Right. Type that in Facebook too. Thanks everybody. Thanks Sorg for uh, having me on again. And I hope you enjoy your stuff, man. That's right. Definitely, definitely. Future Twitch stream. Look for that for that VCR game. Thank you so much for joining us at Sorgatron on the Twitter. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.